And welcome back to the Dean Obi Dollar Show. We're live here the last Friday of February, February 24th, my friends, for what just happened. We have three returning champions. Andre Jones Roy is here, social scientist, specialing in complexity. Again, I don't know what that is, and I've known her for years. Stand up comic and circus artist. Andrea, welcome back. Thank you so much. The key thing is I will never tell you what complexity is. It's not great. ever. Yeah. And <laughs> and behind her, as always in the Zoom thing, is a collection of knives, which every time exactly. she does from the Dexter collection. Also back, Wally Collins, stand-up comic, producer, author, creator of Wait What? with Wally on YouTube. And we were just in a big show on Sunday together where he killed the Big Brown Comedy Show. Wally, nice to see you. Good to see you too, my friend. Good, well, very thoughtful, a very laid back Wally Collins, not the usual Wally Collins. And who is back? I decided to be the professional today, so we'll see really? how that goes. And returning is the Mad King himself, Ben Glebe, headlines all over the country, a host of a show on Netflix. He is the star of a YouTube special. We talked about it last time called The Mad King. And last night, if Twitter is correct, you performed with my buddy Liz Winstead in the Abortion Access Front fundraiser, which I did the one here in New York with. Fugel Sang and David Cross and a few other comics last summer. How'd it go? It was amazing. This one was with Tim Heidecker and Dana Gould and Doug Benson. It was an amazing lineup. Got to do Liz's podcast as well, raise some funds for abortion access. And I stole a guy's tangerine. It was a dream. Wow. So the, it's a complete win for you. You hit the tri the perfect storm for Ben Glebe. 100%. and helping people so let's talk about someone who's not helping people at all and that is the <laughs> marjorie taylor green marjorie taylor green you know at, at one point you can just dismiss her as a joke but now we can't because she's the most visible republican next to kevin mccarthy the house and just so you guys know a little fact because i looked it up i do this thing called research oh the last that. the last election cycle the last two years she raised $12.5 million, the fourth most in the entire House of Representatives on the Republican side, the ninth most out of 435 members completely in the House. She is where the energy of the GOP base is. That's my point. And so when she says we need a national divorce and end America, and because the traitorous Democrats, she's channeling what a lot of the GOP base feels right now. So, Andrea, you are an expert in complexity. Yeah. Let's make sense of this. What's going on? Yeah. Well, I won't tell you what complexity is. I can tell you this is complex. This is uh, highly complex and highly concerning. I guess my question slash hope is that she's getting all this money and the, the base, the core of the GOP supporters like love rushing towards her. But surely she's got to be leaving out the moderate Republicans who don't hate the anyone to the left of them, right? Or am I still living somehow, forgot about the Trump administration and think that there's some sense out there in the world? I don't know what she thinks, but I do know that she says, let's end America, and Sean Henney invites her on his show to chat about it and actually agrees with part of it, going, you know, you make some good points. Like, if you move from a blue state to a red state, you shouldn't be allowed to vote for five years. I'm like, what did you just say? She, that's what they said. Wow. And, and he said, you know, we disagree so much. So how do we find common ground? Isn't a divorce the only way to do it? So, Wally, let me ask you, what if Congresswoman Ilhan Omar had uh, uh, said, that, or AOC, <laughs> called for the end of America? Do you think they'd be invited nicely on Sean Hannon and get a, bath rub, a back rub like that? You say these things just to get, get under my skin. I know it. I know you do. <laughs> Because I, I you see that smirk. I can hear the smirk even in the question. You know, right. <laughs> it's dripping with smirk. That question. <laughs> you know, I just think that she, she is like just getting popular just with the most absurd things. You know, and, and people just gravitate into that just ridiculousness. I mean, divorce from you know, an, an, I, I just don't. I just think that's what it is. Basically, she's just like you know. Let me find something really absurd and just run with it, just run with it. And and she's doing that and it's working. It is. Ben, she said on Fox News that everyone she talks to agrees with her about the need for a national divorce. So, and she said, and her friends are just regular people. Mm. Ben, are you a regular person? Like, are you, she literally used the term, they're all just regular people and they want to end America as we know it. I'm I so guess I'm, I guess I'm not a regular person, Dean. I thought I was, I guess I'm not, but also, in her defense, she's not lying. It's just that everyone she talks to is talking to herself, walking the streets late at night, wandering around. Also, you mispronounced her name. It's Majorly Tainted Grinch. And <laughs> I want to <laughs> like correct. I want to make sure everybody uses that 
proper pronunciation from now on out of respect. I say let her go. Let, let, let them all go. If people want to secede, let them go. If people from Texas want to secede while also claiming to be the most patriotic state in the union, let them go. If people have such weird cognitive dissonance, which I believe is another word for complexity, mm. let them go. Wow. Really? Just let the, what, This is the United States of America. What do you mean? Let the people go or let the states go? Are you saying let the people go? Like, let my people go? Okay, you can cross the border somewhere else. Or are you saying let the states go? Like a a handful of people in Texas go, like, we don't want to be part of the U.S. Like, okay, you're the country of Texas now. Well, because it's United States only because we're united. If we're not united, then those state, if certain states opt to no longer be united and work with the rest of the country, let them bounce. I don't need to keep having the country being dragged into purposeless culture wars and complete bad faith arguments just so we can keep raising money for majorly tainted Grinch. Let them go. If this is the people that want that the people of their state want to elect, well, that's the consequences. You might end up accidentally floating out in a part of the country that's no longer America. Some states are built for it. Florida, it's easy. You just get a chainsaw and you're, you're, it's floating now as an island. Texas also right there. Some of the worst offenders are right there. Georgia, just right right next to Florida. No problem. We, I heard someone wants to build a wall. We might as well just put a wall up there too. Right. Mm-hmm. What do you think they will call it? Like Marjorie Taylor Greenistan? <laughs> or MTG stand, or the United States of MTG Freedom Freedom Stand, or something. By the way, Andrew. So, I mean, do you believe that we're at the point for a divorce, or more like we need counseling at this point, or maybe a separation period? Like you know, we my other, we can see other countries. I'm so excited <laughs> that you asked me this because when I first saw what is it, majorly tainted Grinch's tweet on this, I thought, you know, the word she wants instead of divorce is uh, Gwyneth Paltrow informed conscious uncoupling. All right, that's ah. what we need to do. We need some conscious uncoupling here and so so maybe a little bit of counseling maybe maybe some talking but but kind of to ben's point you know at some point in the relationship if i want to make it work and my husband does not you you can't force them right Right. and so so a little bit of you know dialogue maybe just to make sure and decide who gets the kids i think the kids are virginia i don't know what what, (laughs) what. (laughs) the codas are probably the kids north and south like hey north and south wally yeah start their own party like the Dixiecrats, perhaps? Yeah, mm-hmm. something, yeah, something like that. And say, you know, we're, we're, you know, the progressives are doing something like that. And so why not just, you know, call it, you know, yeah, Dixiecrats. Or something like that. Why don't you start your own party? Like a new tea well, party kind of thing? Yeah. Well, Wally- Look, if they did, if they mm-hmm. did do that, that would be great because the Republican Party would never win an election again. But yeah. if they just go straight divorce... Think about it. You guys are talking about who gets what in the divorce. It would be perfect. We would get all the cool people. We would get all the artists. We would get the LGBTQ community. We would get all people with heart and compassion. What would they get? Just guns. They would just get guns and trucks guns. And, and and truck nuts, which I don't mind letting that go. Yeah, I'm fine so, without truck nuts. If you, if you had to see other countries, what countries would you see? Like, if they're like, okay, look, it's all up for grabs. California, New York, maybe you want to see other countries. You know, we would join a country, mm. we'd be together. We'd be the the coastal country, whatever we'd be. Like, we could really dismiss the people in the middle as the flyover, like, well, you're not in our country anymore. But if it's the idea of seeing other countries to see what's a better fit for us, what do you think is a better fit for California and New York and Jersey and that stuff than, than say, Alabama and Mississippi and Georgia? Maybe they're not a good fit for us. I mean, look, I... You probably have to go geographically convenient just for the commute. I bring Canada and Mexico in, whoever wants in. I mean, Mexico is one of my favorite places to go hang. Canada, very nice, polite people, a lot of empty space. Maybe, though, the people who want the divorce have to move. I think Canada can come here. Mexico Mexico can come here. And I think the, the red states that indeed do want to secede just head north. They obviously are not going to head south, so tell them to head north. There's a lot of empty space. They can hang out with some with some buffalo and, and syrup and just have a great time getting stuck in molasses, and they'll turn into the fossils that they are destined to become anyway. So, all right, I think it's very interesting where this might go because I have to be honest, like on my show, when Trump was president, I said, like, if he wins re-election, in the blue states, it's going to be hard to give federal tax dollars to the federal government to have him use it to deprive women mm. of reproductive freedom because Roe had gotten overturned, that kind of stuff. So I understand the sentiment. 
a little bit, but I never, I'm not a member of Congress on the Homeland Security Committee. So I'm on a radio show. These are things that you say on radio. If you're on the Homeland Security <laughs> Committee, you should be a little bit more responsible for what you're going to say. And there's no pushback. Like the governor of Utah pushed back, but not Kevin McCarthy. So mm. we're in a unique situation. And getting to the idea of moving. So Wally, in, and this is becoming real, in Idaho, the state legislature, their assembly just voted to explore moving the state boundary to allow people in Oregon who are conservative and don't like being in a blue state to actually become part of Idaho. It's called the Greater Idaho Movement. This is real. They Last week, lawmakers in the red state of Idaho vote in favor of a bill that would open up talks between Idaho and Oregon. Oregon, And, you know, are these people that lazy? Like, you can't just cross the... Like, if you're in Oregon, you're like, I don't like it here. There's too many liberals. And you look up, there's Idaho, and it's empty. Like, I've been to Idaho. There's nothing there. You know, you're like, no, I don't want to move. I want the border to move. This is a kind of white privilege taken to a new level, isn't it? Like, I don't, I could move, but I don't want, I want you to move the border for me because I don't want to go across the street. That's exactly what I was going to say. And this is some white privilege. Like, you know, <laughs> I don't, I don't like this zip code. I, I, I want, you know, one, one, zero, zero, one, one. I, I, that's what I want, you know? And it's like, yeah, it's so amazing. Like, Please, I want to be convenient for me. I want to do as less work as possible. And I want things to work out for me. I, I just shake my head. And I'm like, oh, Lord. OK. Let's Can I just this. interject quickly to say I like to think that I keep my white privilege in check and I'm like reflecting on it. But Wally, I literally the other day were about to move. And I was like, oh, I hope I'm this other zip code compared to like I genuinely was like hoping for a certain just zip code. And now I'm going to write to. I don't know, Mayor Adams or someone and see what see what can be done. So so thanks for that. You're moving? <laughs> Literally two blocks from where I am now. It's very You're bringing the knife collection? The knife oh, collection? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. It's got a, she had, look at that. She's got a machete. No, yeah. that's a cleaver. And it's a cleaver. You can see it. You're live on Zoom. This is, it really look. is like the set of Dexter. Like, I don't know what is going on behind you. Well, that's I am going to have to think about it because I never use these knives. And uh, so where we're moving, I won't have to zoom out of the kitchen anymore. But I actually think I might hang the knives up in my uh, to be office just for, for, for brand purposes, really. I think it's important. Yeah. So I'm talking with Ben Cleave, Wally Collins, and Andre Jones Roy. Yes, Ben, what were you going to say? I was just going to say those cleavers could be used to redraw border boundaries That's that right. could come in, ha in handy. I think there's no issue here yet again either. Let's change the border lines. Who cares? It's not like the borders are, are not arbitrary to begin with. If they weren't, every state in the middle of the country would have perfectly straight square borders. We don't have that everywhere. I say let them redraw it. Who cares? It'll just chill out some of these very angry Republicans that are constantly complaining about where they live, the laws of where they are, the laws of America. Redraw it. Make some lawless states. Let them live in the Wild West and shoot each other and complain and, and, and be forced to have every pregnancy that they want. Let them do it. I'm sick. Let Oregon change its name to Oregon because everybody that is frustrating <laughs> will be gone. I don't care. So this is just a side. Just a side note. A lot of those, a lot of those borders were uh, switched because of slavery. I don't. Mm. I don't just want to throw that in there. Yeah. But um, it's, it's it's very interesting how those borders are made. Or were right. Made. Right. It's not like they were made for some pure reason. It's not like these borders were perfect land, perfectly based upon land land convenience. These are right. antiquated lines. Okay. Here's twenty twenty four. Let's just say all borders are dissolved in North America. Everyone do what you want. And then in 2025, we'll we'll think about redrawing some lines. Is we'll join our own, like we'll come together and draw our own lines. Because I'm yeah. I'm from Jersey. I mean, I can move back to Jersey. Maybe New York will include that. I don't know. I, I yeah. probably want lower, ta yeah. lower taxes in Jersey. I probably want, I wish my house could be zoned for Jersey, my apartment right. in New York, because taxes are lower. New York City taxes are, are ridiculous. Also, Wally, it's interesting. It was Republicans who fought to keep the union intact in 1860 after Lincoln wins. And now it's Republicans who are advocating ending the union as we know it in different ways. I mean, these guys are not saying leave the United States at least. They're like, we just wanna, we wanna bring those poor red people in. Well, isn't it a bigger thing here going on? On the right, they're so upset that America's moving forward and their backwards ridiculous views are being rejected that on the national polls, they're in the minority on issues like reproductive freedom, marriage equality, you go through the list, they are in the minority. So their idea now is, okay, let's just form our own country where we can say, you don't have the same right to vote if you're black. Sorry, we want to get rid of the 15th Amendment. I mean, they're literally saying that. Or no more marriage equality. Or, you know, what's your name that you call her? MTG, the monster. 
They said, she's a Christian nationalist and we should be proud as Republicans to be that, meaning no line between church and state. This is what they want. And on some level, you feel bad for them. They picked the wrong country. They were born in the wrong country. So it's either they leave or the United States leaves them. It's kind of an odd thing here going on. It's a desperation. It's the grievance of a minority, which it's not the same as the lead up to the Civil War, but they have been reading a lot about the Civil War lately. Uh, it's not exactly coming, but the grievance of the white people at that time, it, it mirrors it. It's a different reason. Slavery is more a threat to the, the South. Wally, were you going to say something there? I was going to say that. I was saying it. Just kind of like how start Civil War started, but it wasn't as, as a, uh, a financial, economic problem. But, you know, it was it was a succession saying, hey, listen, we want to do our own thing. We want to become our own country, basically. And I think that's that's what's happening. I just I don't know, man. It just seems like, you know, they're just trying to it just seems to me Republicans are, they just want to stir things up. There's not they don't want to solve problems. They just want to ah. just you know, they just want to create problems and say, hey, there's a problem. Well, can you suggest any suggestions to uh, uh, to solve those problems? The problems! See, yeah. there's a problem with that. And so it's like, uh... And I think you're absolutely right, Wally. And I think they're, they're made up or at least highly exaggerated problems, right? Like the perception on in this group of what woke even means or what it is that we stand for if we say we want women to have re or people to have reproductive rights, the way that it's parroted is that we're absolutely far more extreme than we are. So it's like... We're trying to get a divorce and the husband keeps saying, you're cheating on me, you're cheating on me. And the wife is just like, I have one male friend and I'm not cheating on you, but they're freaking out, right? It's like made up problems because yeah. of their insecurities. I'm going to lean into this analogy now. I like it very much. You know, I just wrote a newsletter for the Dean's Report. It's for free on Substack. It's a but great newsletter. I went back and I, I read the declarations of various states when they were seceding, why they were seceding. Because when you read them, mm. there's no states right. It's all about slavery. But one thing is interesting, in the Georgia State Declaration, which they agreed in, in January 1861 they were leaving, they wrote here that they were upset about, for 20 years past, the abolitionists and their allies in the northern states have engaged in constant efforts to subvert our institutions of slavery and to excite insurrection and war among us. So to them, the abolitionists were woke people. See, this is the same idea. The people who want that slavery, they were woke. And it's the same mindset today. If you want to move forward, uh, you're woke and you're a threat to their their way of life. But even, even in these declaration, George actually talked about, we're going to lose $3 million to take our slaves away. So it was completely about white supremacy, but it was also economic white supremacy was part of it. Like It was an existential threat. That's what led to the Civil War. We don't have that. We give these... Twitter wars now, which is absolute bullshit. So let's change gears, guys, and talk about today's the one year anniversary of Russia attacking Ukraine, or as Marjorie Taylor Greene literally said on, on Fox News yesterday, the war of Ukraine against Russia and Ru Ukraine attack Russia. I guess Ukraine got in the way of the missiles and the bullets that they were shooting at them. But are you amazed a year later, little Ukraine, 43 million people against Russia, 150 million people, a year later, in a war that Putin really, literally thought would be over in a month, they'd have the entire country. They have Kiev in a week. So, Andrea, what do you think, my friend? Are you surprised a year later this thing is still going on? And Ukraine's doing pretty good. It's not great, yeah. but pretty good. Well, they, it's it sounds a lot like the U.S. going into Vietnam, where we were like, it's a small country. We have the might of all these forces behind us, and we're going to go in. And in, in political, in historians, politicians at the time, and in political science in my own field, we basically never put into consideration in our models and our predictions, like how much someone cares about the thing that they're fighting for. And if you put that in something like fighting for your country versus whatever the Russian soldiers are doing for Putin, I'm sure there are many who, who believe in it, but I'm sure there are many who are not nearly as passionate as the grandmothers throwing grenades defending their apartment buildings in Kiev, right? It's That's good point. Yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm I'm surprised in the sense that I'm a pessimist, but uh, but it also makes sense. Ben, the what thing that surprises me, frankly, is the the fact that the Republicans are turning this around and somehow on Russia's side. Like that, I actually didn't see that coming, and that's on me. Well, what do you think? I was going to ask Ben. Do you do you think it's this anti involvement, anti engagement wing of the GOP, the same party that gave us both Iraq wars and the Afghanistan <laughs> war? Or is it actually a pro Putin bent in this party that they like the autocrat and they admire him? And he did help Donald Trump win in 2016. There's no denying. The only thing we couldn't prove was collusion, but there's no denying Russia engaged in the election to help Donald Trump and they played some role in helping him. 
Yeah, I mean, there's there's no doubt that it's just because there's this beautiful soft spot for Putin for some reason in the Republican Party. I don't understand it. I don't know where it came from. You got, if you remember the Donald Trump rallies, there were lots of Republicans wearing T-shirts that say, I'd rather be Russian than a Democrat. I mean, straight up embracing our adversaries over part of our own country. Let, maybe that's where they need to move to. They I'm need to thinking. move to Russia. I think that's the move. Let and again, what's the what's the war in Ukraine to some degree largely about? It's about state borders again. It's about lines. We're talking so much about lines today, by the way. Don Jr. is trying to snort it, but the point is, we. Thank you, folks. Here we go. <laughs> that was I like that. Look, it, it, it's just truly wild. Also, I'm a little sleep deprived today, so when Andrea said. There's grandmothers throwing grenades. For some reason, my brain thought, are they grenades or is it cake? I don't know why that popped into my brain. Bun cake. It could be a nice, tasty bun cake. They're like, it, hey, right. eat this and get sleepy. It they could indeed. Good. But put a but powdered sugar, disorient them. I like it. Exactly. A, a, a plume of powdered sugar. Again, Don <laughs> Jr. is running, trying to snort that. The, the, the point is that it's very confusing these days. And, and just to bring it back to combine stories for a moment here, the Republican Party, whose loyalty seems for sure bent towards Putin and Russia, I mean, they straight up say it. Fox News straight up says it. Tucker Carlson straight up admires and compliments Putin constantly. It's, um, it's just a very, very strange way to exist when they claim to be the Freedom Party and at every turn they attack freedom they don't support freedom they they really want to live in a religious fundamentalist country they don't want a place where women have rights where gay people have rights they don't want a place where people can move freely decide what they want to do live their own lives they want a completely controlled handmade tale type of state and you can get that in russia you can get that in certain places in the middle east where you can't get it is america but they're trying they're trying to push a square peg into a strangely drawn border so it's up to them wally what, what do you think should we create a fund and say any republican who wants to move to moscow will pay for a one-way ticket and actually create <laughs> sort of go fund me and we just get pledges no one give us the money and we get like a big number and go like we've got a million dollars now for every republican who hates america and wants to live in russia and like and if they want to go we trigger the money like boom here's your tickets gotta go so that's what we should say to people when they get their arguments with it. Go back to your country. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Go, go to Russia. Yeah. Call the GoFundMe Russian to save democracy. Mm. <laughs> oh, Molly, do you remember? Not a bad idea. Do you remember really when, when we were much younger? There was this guy Ronald Reagan who called the Soviet Union the Great Satan, and he was the leader of the Republican Party. And now this Republican Party has become pro Putin. I I don't know what's happened. Now it is. It's not necessarily the whole party. It's just no, no, it's not true. It's, 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 it's these few. So you know, I, I think we we should definitely make sure that that's said. That you know, it's like these extreme. I'm trying to think of another word besides extreme. Republicans who are just you know just just going off. You know, like it, what is like twenty six of them, twenty seven of them that are just <laughs> going off like that. Like all right, fine, just but, go. It's but it's the let me... leftover Trump. Yeah. Crazies, right? But I want to that... push back on that concept slightly because I I think we let people off the hook when we say it's just the extreme of the party only mm. because these people do not condemn that. And if you don't condemn it, you endorse it. If you don't if if the if the other majority of the party does not say each time these absurd things are said, these absurd things are pushed for, we disavow that. We disavow. If not, everybody doesn't disavow Marjorie Taylor Greene. They endorse it. They just endorse it cowardly. To some degree, even I, I respect more at least those who embrace their own views instead of tacitly agreeing to it. Mm -hmm. And it's just the Republican Party these days allows the fringe to rule it. That's why Kevin McCarthy doesn't push back because he wanted power so bad. He would literally agree to seceding from the nation before giving up his speakership. And if Ronald Reagan were alive today, I'm sure he would rephrase his old statement and say, well, Russia ain't so bad. <laughs> when you get to know them type of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tear down this wall so that we can cross over and, yeah, and right. build it back up. <laughs> Replace or, it with a water slide. A, door yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. a drawbridge of sorts. <laughs> so, uh, so let's take a break, my friends, and come back. There's a lot to cover from the Oscars trying to Will, Will Smith proof this event coming up to 
Donald Trump potentially giving toxic water to people in East Palestine. I'm not kidding. We'll break it down when I come back with more of what just happened on the Dino Bidala show right after this. You guys ready? Come back like 20 minutes. Let's go. Let's go. And welcome back to the Dino Bidala show. It is still Friday, February 24th. And all three contestants have remained, which is great because sometimes we lose them. Andre Jones Roy, Ben Glebe, Wally Collins. That was a long break, by the way. That was, I, mean, I know. Yeah. I hope you guys feel okay about that. Yeah, I, I, so let's focus I'm on- rejuvenated. So I Donald Trump, what I like about, they call it East Palestine, but sometimes they call it Palestine. Mm. And I'm like, being a Palestinian heritage, I'm like, oh, look, finally, Republicans care about Palestine. But then they made it clear it's like East Palestine. I'm like, all right, fair enough. So Trump goes there because he's not president, but he thought he'd show up because there are a lot of white people. And he goes, these are my people. And he gave them water, Trump water, and he literally said, I'm giving you Trump water and, quote, much lesser quality of water. But as people noted, and I did research, and there's real news articles about this, Trump water shut down in 2010. So that's- Is it from Flint? What happened? To- right. I, so it's no longer a company. So the question is, did he get new bottles of water and take the labels off and put Trump water? Or is he peddling water that's been 13 years sitting in a bottle- a PVC bottle, which ironically, vinyl chloride, which spilled, is used to make plastic bottles, which people are wondering, does it break down in 13 years? I don't know the answer, but we do know from everything I read is that Trump water stopped being made in 2010. So he gave them something. So, Andrew, let's start with you. Hmm. Toxic water? Do you think they just bought Poland Spring or even cheaper water and peel the labels off? Or Trump got the Trump water band back together to make this stuff? I mean, I'm just assuming that they had a whole case of this stuff or, or multiple cases on some abandoned floor of a Trump Tower uh, in New York City that everyone forgot about and no one goes to. And they just dust, you know, sprayed it off with with some hair dryers or whatever to dust it and make sure that more microplastics get in the water and just passed it around. I don't think they even printed new labels. I think they just had it. Wally, do you think if a water sits in a plastic water bottle for 13 years that <laughs> it's still OK? Like, what's the longest you would drink, actually consume water that's spinning in a bottle. Someone said, hey, I have, while I have this great bottle of water, I haven't opened it. 10 years ago, I got it. You're going to love it. It's from the original Poland Spring, the actual Poland Spring. Would you drink it? You know what? You know, a MAGA person would definitely say, I- I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Let's let's drink the water. <laughs> so, I wish Dr. Fauci would come out and go, the water's safe. You can drink it. And then they wouldn't right. drink it all. They'd be, throwing, they'd be showing him pour in their toilet bowls. So- I think, I think Dean, I think it's, it's Trump's personal stash. Cause if you remember, he's unable to drink water very well himself. So he probably just mm. tries to grab it over the years and he goes, ooh, ooh, and he can't quite get it to his mouth. And so he's got a lot left over. And so especially he shouldn't touch it. Maybe it's some leftover like experimental clear diet Coke or something. Cause I could see him over investing in that. It, it, Trump water should have come with some kind of like sippy cup or something. Mm. The way Trump, <laughs> like a big straw. <laughs> like, I mean, like you can hold it, has two handles on it for both hands. Yeah. It, it, like has those straws with, with uh, loops in it. And he goes, this is the best straw because it's a lot more fun. You see the water loop-de-loop around. <laughs> That's how we're making America great. Loop-de- Wally, did you ever see Trump water in any store at any time in your life? I'm not kidding. <laughs> Um, no, I, no, I, I, I didn't, but I did do a commercial with him, by the way. With really? Donald Trump? Yeah. For Man. Trump Steaks? No, it was, no, for it his was. Black, uh, were you his black friend? No, yeah, yeah, for, for that hour. Um, it was, uh, when his, uh, clothing line, uh, came out in Macy's and, um, yeah. And so I, uh, basically was trying out his stuff in a, in a dressing room and, um, I had a, a tie on, one of his ties on, and his bit was he came to the dressing room, gave me a thumbs up, and then left. And so my, re- I was supposed to be like, reacting like, that was Donald Trump, that when, kind of thing. Did you film this just like a few weeks ago? Like when did you do no, that? No, no, this, 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 this was a while before. This was a while before I, I, I you know, I, I did my research on on Donald Trump, but I met him twice, and uh, it was a, it's a very interesting. Uh, his, he really does have soft hands. Oh, did you keep, Don, were you able to keep the tie? Do you have the Trump tie at home now or the Trump product? You know, crazy. I did. I did keep it, but I lost it in the move, but I did. I did have a Trump tie. Donald was Trump it? cannot help but storm into dressing rooms. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where's your New Yorker expose, Wally? Yeah, yeah exactly. It's, it's, well, I'm, I'm working on the final draft of it. Okay. So. That's you- kind of interesting. Wally, all these years, I know you've never revealed the fact that you were in a Trump commercial. Is it online? Can I find it on YouTube? Probably could find it, and also I did. I did uh, um the 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 the, the show the, Apprentice. Uh, yeah, you were on The Apprentice. What? Yeah, it, it was uh, 
when the when the the celebrities um had to do a fundraiser so they decided to do a comedy show and wow. they got uh six of us to uh perform for their friends and stuff like that and uh met him again and did you did you say hey you remember me from the thing and he goes yeah he said my black friend he did <laughs> <laughs> see i told you i'm not racist there's the black for trump <laughs> This There's is, my African American. <laughs> ben, had, do you have any connections to Trump where you've never revealed yet? You've done a commercial. You've been in the dressing room with him. Anything you want to share? Uh, no. I, in fact, my attorney, huh? No, no, Ben. Uh, yeah. My attorneys, my attorneys told me to leave it at that. So. Oh, that, that's an NDA. <laughs> what about you, Ben? Any connection to Trump that you've never revealed before? That it's time to get off your chest. Um, just that I, for Halloween a couple years ago during his administration, I, I dressed as Trump. It was in the midst of a very dark time in my life. And <laughs> I did it for two Halloweens in a row, actually. And I, I was, I was, wow. I was, I hope you've uh, gotten the help you need. Yeah. I was conjuring him up and I would literally walk around. There's literally a, 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 a picture of me as Trump on my friend Kate Walsh's Instagram with her consent, she let my miniature plastic hand touch her breast. It's on her Instagram, and she was looking at wow. it stunned. Why am I being touched by Donald Trump? And also, at that same party, was at a friend of mine, a comedian friend's house, and I was not invited to a party at her house ever since. I think everyone did not enjoy <laughs> having Trump at the party psychically it created a terrible vibe. I remember having a weird conversation about John Mayer's music career, long-term goals with John Mayer dressed as Donald Trump. It was very strange. And wow. then I ran into him uh, months later. And I said, hey man, and he didn't recognize me. And I was like, oh yeah, I was dressed as Trump last time we hung out. And he was like, all right. But that was a lot of names to drop in one a answer. Lot of names. That was very impressive though. So did you Thank grab you. other kids candy? Did you do all the Trumpian things? Like I'm gonna grab your candy. I did. I took a bottle of alcohol from the house. Um, it was a great, great time. And Andrew, do you have any, did you yeah. dress like Trump? Have you channeled Trump? Is there any knives that you have with the word Trump on them? Well, I was going to say, now that you ask, these are all Trump knives. And I'm actually partnering with him to try to sell them to the people of East Palestine. For, East for Palestine. This is, yeah. it's kind of, I have, the only connection I had to Trump was when I worked at Center at Live on the production staff years ago, he hosted the first time. Mm. And he was, he wasn't that good. I mean, he really was not the performer. He actually developed into a better performer over time, to be honest. But he was just like a clown. We're like, oh, it's Donald Trump. The punchline's here, whatever. Right. And it's a comedy show. So they're like, it's perfect. And, okay, let's, let's, let's see, talk about Oscars. No, let's talk. I find this really interesting. There's a trial going on. I don't know if any of you watch it at all. Alex watch Martin. the whole thing. You have? Wow. <laughs> I watched Alex a lot Martin of it yesterday. Yeah, instead trial. of doing my job for killing his wife and his son. He's also got financial crimes involved. He took the stand yesterday. It was the news all day, CNN, MS. I don't watch Fox. I don't know if they covered it. It was gripping. There's a guy saying, I didn't kill my child or my wife and he's crying and he's lying. He's clearing, clean, trying to clean up lies and all that kind of stuff. Before we get into him, here's the bigger thing. Netflix already came out with a mini series about this. I'm not kidding. They're real. It's called the Murdoch Murders, a Southern Scandal. Because he was from a, a legal family from the South, from the Low Country. I hear twenty five. Every article is like he was a a legal family, some kind of well known in the Low Country of South Carolina. It's like a Matthew McConaughey movie from the eighties yeah. or the nineties with Sandra Bullock is going to be in it and show up something like that or Julia Roberts something like that to kill something. But why are we even me? Why do we like real crime drama? I don't understand. I watched the Spectre one on. Mm. on Ronnie Spector, not Ron, well, Ronnie, the, the husband, Phil Spector. I knew the story. I knew what happened. I still watched it like going, I wonder if he'll be guilty or not. Like I knew where it was going to go. I still watched every episode. So Andrea, you're an expert in complexity. This sounds Here we go. complex. What is, <laughs> why, why, do, why do we like these mysteries about cases we even know about? I don't know. It's truly a bigger mystery than black holes and dark matter and all the rest, because I, I think of myself as someone who doesn't get sucked into those. I haven't listened to Serial. I'm like, actually not. I haven't seen the Dahmer uh, stuff. I'm really behind, but I'm sitting on my couch yesterday. I get a New York Times alert about this trial and I said, well, let's take a little look. And the next thing I know, I'm reading every back article that's ever been written. I'm following the play by play. I'm watching the clips and I can't get it. And I, I was thinking about, I, I feel it like deep within me, like, I can't look away and maybe, and I'm like, why is this? And I, I don't know if it's because it's just so shocking and extreme, 
and or it makes me feel honestly I was like I thought I had problems this guy is in a real bad way and but then I'm looking at him and I'm judging how he looks and it's just I think I just like to I think it makes me feel better and it's a voyeuristic oh. thing or it's something that we're all afraid of and so you 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 know you want you can watch a video yeah. of him with his son right before the son was killed like it's right. And listen to sure. his voice. Okay, I the don't know. Part, I'm not sure. But let me ask you though, as a former trial lawyer, and I was, and I had tried case of the jury. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're watching this in the first five minutes. Are you just deciding is he guilty or not? Like, well, you're watching right away. Doesn't that, that's what everyone yeah. does. You watch him. And people like trial lawyers, we work on a case and they don't we don't realize jurors tend to make up their mind sometimes during opening statement. Oh, yeah. They make it up in jury selection when they hear a little bit about the case and they go, No, I have an open mind. But then every piece of data that comes in is to confirm yeah. they're already where they're going. But sometimes jurors are really good and they get in the room and the discussion kind of changes. They're like, well, I thought he was guilty. Then I heard everyone else. I'm like, okay, not. But so you did watch it. And then five minutes, I'm watching five minutes. I'm watching with hand. I'm like, guilty or not guilty. Whenever I watch this, I'm like, I look at his body language. I look what he's doing. So while I do, what do you, you think? Any, well, well, I don't want to say yet. I'm oh, well, okay. I got to know. I'll, I'll share. You're the expert. I'm not sure I'm the expert, but. He is a lawyer too, so I, I yeah. have a sense of what he's doing. But Wally, what do you think, my friend? Do you watch any of these in live testimony, like this kind of defendant go, your first question is, you decide if he's guilty or not in like five minutes? You go, no, don't believe him. Yep, I believe him. I can't believe he did it. I think it's human nature to size someone up as soon as you, meet, as soon as you see them. You know what I mean? And then, like you're saying, is so now you have that decision, then you listen to the trial, and then you look, look for those little nuggets to confirm your decision. You know what I mean? We we definitely uh, uh, call someone guilty, and then we look for confirmation of that guilt. But then something else kind of tw- wait, wait, wait a minute, um, maybe he is innocent or they are innocent. So we always do that. We always we always. I mean, that's part of survival. When someone's walking towards you, is this person a threat or not? And we look look him up and down, and we automatically put and call him a threat. First of all, we don't say is this person safe? Is right. this person a threat? So yeah, we, we always that's just human nature. I watch it every once in a while just to see rich people get in trouble and see how they uh, how they get out, you know. And it's like, wow, this is a this is, this is a white privilege trial. He walks on this. Ben, you've hosted a lot of shows. Have you ever hosted a real crime series, or do you aspire to? If you haven't, I have not. I'm not particularly interested in the genre. Um, this is a joke I talk about in my special, The Mad King, available now on YouTube or my link in bio and my Instagram. Um, <laughs> and and I, I talk about the fact that, you know, gender roles really s- seem to be flipping in this country and blending and the ro- the lines that we used to think were, were there are no longer there because we all grew up thinking, you know, men love action movies and women love romantic comedies. But it's not true because I love romantic comedies. And every woman I talk to, she's like, I just binge watched 12 serial killer documentaries on Netflix. <laughs> We've completely flipped on that. And so I don't personally understand the show. I wouldn't be able to sleep well if I did. Yet my female friends have no problem sleeping after watching really creepy things right before yep. bed. Mm-hmm. So I don't understand that. And I've barely followed this except for whatever, you know, summaries they show on the nightly news about Murdoch. But I'll tell you this much. He's definitely guilty. He's definitely <laughs> guilty. He just took the stand. He just took the, the, the stand to defend himself and the way his defense is admit that he lied to the cops about where he was and why he was there at the time oh, of the yeah, murder. Yeah. yeah. yeah but he's that... having to. Okay. No, and, go ahead. The re... well, and the reason why he lied was just the mo- very generic nonsensical excuse of, Oh, because of my opioid addiction, I decided to lie about where I was during the murder of my family. Listen, I've taken <laughs> o- opioids. It doesn't make you lie to police about murders. That's something that's not, it does not occur. He wears his glasses too far down on his nose to be innocent. He's trying to look scholarly. He's definitely guilty. But whether I'm right or not, we, for 100% fact, he's guilty of murder. Wow. Murder, nice. And and that's the wow. thing. That's the wow. I'm really curious. <laughs> so Ben already gave us his answer. He testifies and asks, did I kill my child or my wife? He says no. And he's crying. And even in the 911 call, He's crying and you're like, well, that's pretty. And his voice is really high. Like there's a lot of emotional stuff going on. And they're like, wow. And, but then he gets on the stand and and because he had lied, he told the police that he woke up at 7.30 that night, June, 2021, didn't see either family member, went out, saw his mom, whatever, came back at 10 and they're dead. Now it turns out that his voice is on a video and the timestamp puts it not too far from the murders. And he goes, okay, 
I lied about that, but I didn't lie about killing my family. So, Andrea, I mean, could you, yeah. if someone admits to a lie like that, do you go like, I think you're lying about everything? Or do you go, okay, I sort of could understand why you would lie about that. Uh, and so you're guilty of lying, but I don't think you're guilty of murder. I, I'm so glad you asked, because even after I spent all of yesterday paying attention to this rather than doing anything I was supposed to be doing, I woke up this morning, didn't look at the trial stuff, I'm making coffee, and I'm just literally just sitting there thinking, why would he only lie about the one, like, why would he say he's lying about, he lied about everything except for this? There's no way he didn't lie about everything. I think he's lying. That's what I'm trying to say. It's just such a weird thing to be like, I was lying about this and this and this and this and this, except for the one thing that's convenient for me to definitely not be lying about. He's plus, guilty. Plus... Dean, you haven't even brought up the twist of the the like feigned suicide or or attack effort. That There's he a tried lot. To do. There's a lot. I mean, he it's, has financial crimes. The jury's hearing all about his financial crimes. He admitted to stealing from his from his from his clients. I'm sure he steals from his clients. He lies about the murder scene, but he's totally innocent. And random people came and murdered his family. Okay. And I, I think just to add to to Ben's comment about, you know, women sleeping soundly after this, I think that's absolutely right. And I think if anything, it's kind of validating because because we are afraid a lot of the time that horrible stuff's going to happen. I'm not as strong as men and uh, they could tie me up and kill me in a dog kennel and I couldn't do anything about it. And so watching these things, you're like, yeah, that's why I'm so afraid all the time. So like it like is validating for my anxiety. I think that that's might be why weird. I watch it. I, that's such an interesting thing. That's such an interesting way to take in this data, which it never occurred to it's me. It's calming. <laughs> right, like, like, See, well, I told you. So there, there are bad people out there. I'm not a crazy, I'm not yeah. I'm An over the top. Anxiety confirmation bias. Instead of trying to avoid the anxiety, yeah. you're like, I want to know that I'm right, that the world is scary. That's a yeah. very unique. I say, can I, I will say this though. Uh, he is like a lawyer he, who's, seen and prepared good expert witnesses he looks right at the jury when he answers mm. and what he's doing is connecting with the jurors and all he needs one is for a hung jury you need a all the jurors i assume in south carolina for an acquittal that's usually the rule but one of them handed him a kleenex box why is that allowed that's, that can't it, be allowed it's human and that one yeah he was close he was looking so close and, and and leaning forward so much when he was crying one of the jurors handed him a kleenex box no. that seems very yeah. not okay. Like, let's all have a group hug with the jurors. Okay. Little, he, <laughs> he was crying. He was crying. Right he was crying on the jurors. Like he's like he's got his head on them. <laughs> jury box. Mark, I didn't do I didn't this. Know I, uh, you know me, Mark. You know me. I'd never do that, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know my name? Juror number seven. I would never do that. I care about you. Wow. I would, this is. It's really interesting. My friend Danny Savalas comes on every week. He's MSNBC legal analyst and a practicing criminal defense attorney. He said. From what he's seen, that he would not be surprised if he walks, that he doesn't get convicted. Yeah. Because you go on the stand, and there's other people who go like, they all know you don't go on the stand usually. But we saw Kyle Rittenhouse go on the stand, and it's becoming slightly more common now. And the bottom line is, everything else goes out the window. If you believe that he didn't kill his wife and kid, you're like, I don't care about the other stuff. I just don't yeah. believe he killed him. Like, yeah. he could commit financial crimes. He could have lied to the cops for whatever reason. The bottom line is, do you believe he would kill his own wife and his own son? And that's hard to do. That's a hard sell to a normal person. He's got to be a monster for you to believe that. Really a monster, not financial crimes. It's a whole level of monsterness. That's a legal term. That is, yeah. <laughs> like you've got, so I don't know. He might, he might be guilty, but he might walk because he doesn't come across as a monster. I, that's why I watch him for a little while. I'm like, mm. no, he doesn't. He comes across he, as like he, a guy who had some problems. Who's like a middle-aged white guy from a Southern family. Yeah. And they know his name, the family name. And like, and he had financial problems, but would you kill your wife and kids? Why wouldn't you go to other people with money? Cause you know them, you run in those circles to take care of your debts. That's the hardest sell. That's why it's going to be such a hard thing to convict him. I'm not saying he won't just saying that makes it hard. And you're right, like watching him, I, some of the parts that I saw, he was, he was, you know, going through like, this is how much money I took from this client. It's $4 million that went to me instead of, and then the prosecutor was having him read it out loud. And he, you just feel sad, sad for him. Right. Like, oh, he's just sort of like a, a sad, ashamed old guy. And why, no, why are, why are people feeling sad for a man that stole millions well, from people? He ruined other lives. It just proves that he's willing to ruin lives, to take money. When you're already a millionaire, you're stealing millions from others. This should make you hate him. Why does it make yeah. you feel sorry for him? I it makes me want to like, try opioids. I mean, that's, that's got to be a point. hell of a drug. I think that's the whole point of the, of, of the trial is like, you know, all right, so this is, this is, it's showtime now. Mm -hmm. So now, now we're going to, we're going to develop this character. 
And so, and it, I mean, and plus this guy, you know, he understands, you know, how the game works. So, you know, all that stuff, he's he basically trained himself. And now he's going to basically use what he taught his clients to do. He's going to, she's going to show me. It's, it's going to be a master class, be honest with you. And, and interestingly, just so you know, and I can only say this from what I've heard, because I've never been on a jury. What you guys are saying right now is very close to what jury deliberation is about. Mm. About one person like Ben, who's the obnoxious guy, <laughs> <laughs> Judge Judge Ben Gleeb. I'm kidding. You should be on a judge show, Ben. You'd be hilarious. Judge Ben Gleeb, like ten seconds in, guilty. Next, like, <laughs> <laughs> like okay, continue with your case. Guilty. I would love that. That's who I, I would love to host. That I'd would like be very that. funny. And no, but then you have, you like. You know, you're saying, Andrea, that you feel bad for him. There's going to be people on that jury who actually feel like I feel bad for him. And the question is, yeah, he's a criminal, but did he kill him? Killing your own wife and your own child takes a, a level of depravity that you usually don't see. And it's really it's like killing a stranger or killing someone you owe money to or just killing your wife and your child at close range, like execution style. I'm not saying you didn't do it. I'm just saying that's the burden on the state. Beyond a reasonable doubt, it's beyond a reasonable doubt that this guy is such a monster, he would do that. And that's what makes it hard, not impossible. It's just, the state is a hard case because of that. If he came across as like, um, like sat there and they wouldn't put him on the stand, but if he sat there like a jerk or something, like, man, eh, he was gonna become a monster. And by testifying, it humanizes him. Because yeah. without that, he can be painted as a caricature as a monster. He should have yeah. hired you to be his lawyer. That's very compelling. No, no, he knows everything I'm saying, his lawyer, they've discussed, that's the hardest, question at all. I had few, I didn't have any criminal trials above municipal court level. You can go to jail for six months, but nothing really serious. And you have people all the time and you're like, I want to tell my story. And then you talk to them like, you, you shouldn't, <laughs> you shouldn't. <laughs> Don't tell your story. I had a guy once, like a last second here, I'll just say, I had a guy represented who was, it was a signed counselor because it was no money and I did pro bono work. And he said, I don't even know who these people are, who they are accusing me of throwing a brick at them. That's a, the accusation. Because I go, you never saw them ever. He goes, never. I have no idea who they are. I'm like, wow, what a weird case. And then they walk and he goes, they're here. I'm like, how did you know they were here? <laughs> <laughs> so we were like, okay. Now it came out. Like, you know, there was no way for him to know. I said, you've never seen them? Nope. Don't know who they are. Like, it was, the cops just picked me because I'm a black guy. That's what he said. I'm like, okay, it might be. People came in and they were black too. And he goes, that's them. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing i'm like let's make a deal so we did we made a deal yeah. there's no real all right so, so we're out of time guys where can people andrea where can people see your work and follow you if they want to help you move where can they do what can they yeah do? come come help me move the knives aren't going to move themselves uh <laughs> i'm at jones roy j-o-n-e-s-r-o-o-y on all the things mr collins what about you buddy um tonight i'll be at the comic strip uh my um uh the dry bar drops out drops on tw uh, february 27th Oh wow! Yeah, uh, special Monday comes out, mm -hmm. and yeah. it's drybar.com. People can check it out. You should be plugging that. All right, well, that's why I'm here. I know. <laughs> I plugged it more. I'm sorry. February twenty seventh. I like this so casually. Yeah. I will. I know. I will. I'll share it on Twitter. The link for what it's worth as well. I'll okay. share it to my three hey. followers. And Judge Ben Glebe, Judge will, ben, Glenn, ben, we're pick, we're pitching a judge show. It'd be hilarious. Like you, you amazing. decide guilt or innocent like in thirty seconds. I left. really would love to do that very much. I'll also share it while you just just a DM me, please. Um, and uh, so I'll, I'll be watching Wally's special. I'm also at the grand reopening <laughs> week week two of the Ice House uh, tonight at 10 p.m. in Pasadena. It's back open and it's renovated and it's beautiful and. This Saturday, anybody listening to this around planet Earth anywhere, you can come to my first virtual comedy show in three months, Glebe Off the Top, Crowd Work and Improvised Madness. You can get a ticket at benglebe.com or nowherecomedy.com. It's a weird, wild virtual community. I play a bunch of characters. I interact with the audience. It's really, really fun. And you get a ticket for a very reasonable price if you go there right now. Go there. Check it out. Ben Glebe, Wally Special. Andrea's move. Guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. We'll take a break. Be back with more of the show after this.